Welcome to the Exam Room Podcast brought to you by the Physicians Committee. Hi, I am the weight loss champion, Chuck Carroll. My guest today is not just a food for life instructor. He is a man of faith. And as that man of faith, he will restore your faith that a healthier future can, in fact, be yours no matter what circumstances you are facing today, no matter how much you may be doubting yourself today. The fact of the matter is what Charles Smith has to say will prove to you that, in fact, you too can get healthy. With that, we welcome my main man, Charles Smith, to the exam room. Sir, it is good to see you again. Good to see you, Chuck. And man, it's a pleasure to be on your show. The pleasure is all mine. You're the inspiration here today, my friend. I'm I'm just so in awe uh, with your story. And it is really a, a powerful one because just like so many million, I mean, tens of millions of us around the world, you have uh, really seen the ill effects that uh, unhealthy lifestyle and a poor diet can have. You've witnessed this tragically firsthand uh, with your own family. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. Um, but man, I want to start by saying you look fantastic. You look fit. You look healthy. And so I got to ask you, growing up, I mean, were you were you eating the healthiest foods? What, what was <laughs> going on there, man? <laughs> <laughs> Great question, Chuck. Whatever mama put on the table, <laughs> that's what we ate. And uh, it was some awful stuff when you think about it, now that we know really what's going on inside of the body. But we did what we had to do. Uh, we ate what we ate because that's what we had. And unfortunately, it has led to short lifespans on some major family members. Uh, when we talk about my mom, siblings, my dad, uh, nobody, not, not one of them lived to be 60 years old. Mm. And for me to be at my age, 66 now, it is absolutely, uh, related to food. And mm. that's why I'm so proud to be carrying this message, Chuck, because mm. it's about the food that we eat. It, it comes down to it. I, I mean, that's, I, I'm, I'm sorry for all of your losses. And the when you say that, it makes me think to the fact that at one point in my life, I didn't think I was going to live to see 30 years old. And I'm sure that you may have had those same thoughts about turning 60. But now here you are, 66, feeling fit, looking fantastic. Do you feel like you're kind of in bonus time and every day you're embracing and just seizing the day, as they say, carpe diem, making the most out of everything? You know, Chuck, one of the hardest years is when I was 58 because that's the year that my mom passed. And I felt so fantastic. I felt so good. And I was thinking, this is so young. I can't believe she was really just starting to live. But I got through that year. It wasn't a day that passed that I didn't think about her because that was the year that was the age that she was when she passed. So it was really difficult. But I, I make sure now that I pass on good, good tips about eating habits to my children, my children's ministry. Everybody that know me know my eating habits. Mm. <laughs> and I don't have to say not one word. And I'm not influenced. And I don't push people, but I show folks that this is how I eat regardless of where I am and what I'm doing. You're leading by example, you know, and I think that that's actually one of the best ways that you can reach a person is just leading by example as opposed to forcing something on them. Let them sit back for a little bit and just kind of watch what it is you're doing and like, hmm, yes. what is Mr. Smith doing that I'm not? Let me take a closer look at his plate. And soon enough, they come up to you and they start asking questions. And that's a, that too. I mean, we're talking about power here. That is a very powerful thing just to be able to be so comfortable in what it is that you're doing, even though it's so counter to, I'm sure, a lot of the culture that is is around you, um, you know, just to, to still have that that pride in yourself and that belief in what it is that you're doing and then kind of opening the eyes of others. I mean, I can't think of anything more rewarding than that. I'm telling you, it is so rewarding because you know you're impacting them. When they start asking you, uh, well, do you take any medication? And I'll say, no, medication is not my destination. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I, it's not my goal. I don't want it. Food is responsible medicine for me. So just to give them something to take with them by watching, and I won't say very much, but I'll show a lot. I'm going to eat my vegetables. I'm going to eat my grains. I'm going to eat my legumes. I'm going to eat my fruits. And pretty soon, you'll see them eating a little fruit, eating some legumes. <laughs> it is so amazing and so attractive to people. And I am so appreciative to be able to witness by my lifestyle, job. All right. I want to uh, talk a little bit more about your family here. I have this this list of tragedies that have struck. Um, you you were mentioning fifty eight being a big year for you. So when you were fifty eight, well, that was your mom. She, let's clarify. She was fifty eight uh, when she passed um, due to poor health. I understand that she also struggled with her weight, but that's that's really just the beginning. There, you had sisters uh, who died at fifty four and fifty two years of age uh, due to cancer uh, and kidney disease. Uh, more recently, sadly, you also had a brother who passed away from COVID nineteen. I, I believe you mentioned your father as well. I mean, that's how how does a person deal with so much? I mean, that is just an enormous amount of loss, and each one of them so young in life. Yes, Chuck, and, and, and it all started with, particularly with my mom, my sisters, uh, obesity was the real issue and things just kind of trigger down from that. So what that taught me was I needed to have a different lifestyle uh, and I needed to be a motivation for my family. My mom left us too early in my opinion and I was not going to leave my family that early if I had anything to do with it. And, when, and the more I learned about food and what food could do for you, the more excited I got about making a difference in my life and showing my children, showing my spouse, showing my cousins. And because we all grew up with that same eating habit mm -hmm. right? because it's all we knew. And again, they passed it down to us. We duplicate what we see. And so learning from that, Chuck, I know that my family, they are duplicating what they see. And I want to be that inspiration for them. So I drew, rather than negativity from it, rather, rather than being angry, uh, my, I just took it and, and it became my mission to make a difference in people's lives wherever I go. I mean, well, I mean, clearly you're making a, a huge difference, but I mean, when you first started to connect the dots between food and health and the idea of preventative medicine or what's now known as kind of lifestyle medicine, um, I mean, this was, this was a number of years ago at this point, wasn't it? It was. And, and the thing, one of the things that I love is energy. Uh, I eat for energy. So it, that made it easy for me because I know you don't accomplish a whole lot unless you have some energy. So that was my main thing. I got to I got to eat food that's going to give me energy. And we had a fast at our church and we let go meat. I had become a pastorian, a vegetarian, but we had no meat for a whole month. And this was over 20 years ago. Um, and I felt so fantastic. I had all the energy that I needed. So I never really went back to eat not one piece of meat. Before then, when my mom was sick and she passed and my sister passed, I mean, I was eating maybe a fish or, or just a little, you know how we do, chicken is better than, you know, everything else <laughs> when you don't know. <laughs> when you don't know, you don't know. <laughs> but one, when I found out that I didn't eat any of it and I was healthy with energy, felt fantastic. It was no looking back for me. Not at all. I, okay. So let's, let's talk about maybe the night before you go on this month long meat fast, which you thought was only going to last a month. I remember 
Uh, when I made up my mind, I was going to change my life for good. I had what I call the last supper. And hopefully as a man of faith, you can appreciate this yeah. analogy. I mean, my last supper would have fed, you know, all of the apostles <laughs> as well. Okay. So, I mean, I'm having 18 inches of cheesesteak. I'm having a big old bucket of fries. I don't mean a large order of fries. I mean, a bucket of fries and a ginormous soda. And I mean, that, that was my last supper because I was like, I don't know when I'm going to get this again. And I knew, at least I thought at the time that I was really going to miss it. So I was kind of having this conflict of emotions going on within me. Was it a similar experience for you? Well, see, what it was for me, uh, Chuck, this particular uh, fast, because we always do it. We do it every June. I mean, every January and every uh, July. And I wasn't going to participate this time. Simply because well, I was going to half participate. So I was I was having, and as a matter of fact, you know what I mean? I was having this conversation with God, like, you know, I need my energy. I'm in the insurance business. I, can, I cannot. And I was drinking like a boost, two boosts a day, right? And one in the morning and then one in the afternoon just to give me that energy, or as I call it, that boost. And I wasn't going to let that go. I was not going to let that go. And so the night before the fast was supposed to start, I just heard and I felt it in my spirit that I would have even more energy than I ever had before if I were to be obedient. Okay, I felt so guilty. I didn't give the boost to anybody. I just literally threw them away because I didn't want to mess them up either. So I had no intention of going through completely with this fast. And so when I did the energy that I had, I just left everything alone. As, for, as a matter of fact, for a couple of years, I didn't drink no juice or anything. I would eat on eat fruits, but I wouldn't drink like orange juice. I would eat orange. It was just water. Mm -hmm. And I was, because I was loving where I was. I was feeling great, and I didn't want to intimidate that at all. So... But after a couple of years, I started, you know, tasting juice and, and so forth and so on. And but I never tasted another piece of meat in my life. Never. How about that? So where did this idea, you know, first first pop into to your head? I mean, clearly this is something that was introduced to you uh, in church. But I mean, this whole meat fast, was that something that you were familiar with growing up or was it something that first popped onto your radar as an adult? We used to, we, we grew up with that, but it wasn't a month. You know, you would fast for a day, which is more what we would call reasonable. You would fast for a day. <laughs> 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 oh, you're talking about a month? You, you, you don't do that. But the thing that, uh, the reason that I had started to just consume fish most was because I figured it out that if my body didn't have to break down things that I could get more energy out of it. So I signed a contract saying to my body said, listen, I won't put anything in you that you're going to have to work to break down because that tires me out. But what I need from you is the energy that I can get from not wearing you out with having to break down this and that. That was my mindset. But I didn't want to give up my my boost because that was a lifter, uh, and I I mean once I did that though, I had more energy than I ever had, and I and, and I'm a man that loves the energy. I was not going to change. I was not going to go back again. It took me two years to taste some orange juice before <laughs> <laughs> just to, and they called my wife and my children. They said, Dad, you just, you're an extreme. You're an extreme. But some things it's good to be extreme about. For sure, man. I think that uh, when it comes to success and, and these types of transformations, going to, you know, one extreme can definitely be beneficial for you. Yes. Um, the boost that you keep mentioning, is that one of those nutrition shakes that the boost shakes? I, I don't know how nutrition it was, but it was. Uh, they're sold as nutrition. Oh, anyway. they sold as nutrition. <laughs> yeah, I got yes. you. Yes, that's I got it, you. But yes. Yes, I got you. It came in the can, and so yes. How long was your 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 transition? So when you first decide to to give up meat, there you go. That month you feel fantastic. You're like, ah, I'm not going back. 
you go pescatarian for a while. How long before you reached a fully plant-based status? Well, before that fast, I was pescatarian. I would, I would, I would do that. Uh, and then I went from pescatarian to vegetarian. Mm -hmm. And then as I grew in knowledge about how things was really working, because when I, when I got through with the fast, it was, I was, I mean, I was totally vegetarian at the time. I was, I mean, the fit, everything was gone, but the dairy was there. And so after, uh, it's been now almost 20 years since I've been 100% vegan. 20 years? Yes. Oh, Charles, you were ahead of the curve, man. Well, you know, when you, when you, interesting enough, even in college, when you don't know, Chuck, you just don't know. But when, even when I was in college, I was trying to be healthy with vitamins because you get, you know, my story, you read about my story. So I didn't want to go that route. So I was trying to do the things to make, to make my body healthy. I was taking vitamins, multivitamins, and I was trying to eat what I thought was right. But the more I learned, then it wasn't that hard for me to change because it's what I was seeking mm -hmm. anyway. And mm -hmm. now you could tell me that I can live um, and see, this is the point where, where I'm going to have to hold back tears because I took my mom to dialysis and watched her, you know, watch that machine, take the blood out, put the blood back in three days a week. And she hated it. I heard the doctor say that your mom wasn't going to live, but he put it to me this way. Cause I thought, okay, she's on this machine now. She's fine. And he said to me, you know, if you have a car and you get a new transmission, put it in there. But if the motor is no good, the car still won't run. I had no idea what he was talking about, why he was telling me that because I was in denial. I was a mama's boy. I wanted to, yeah, I just assumed she would always be there. But just being there with her, watching her go through this, it affected me so deep. And I didn't realize it. And I didn't realize what the doctor was saying until like five years after her death. And then it kind of dawned on me. He was preparing me. He was trying to tell me that it wasn't going to be long. Mm -hmm. But those were the things that I didn't want to hear. But since that point, deep down, I've been wanting to be better to my body because of what I saw her body go through. That is not pretty. And then to see my sister just lying there with, you know, this is kind of vivid, but blood just coming out of her nose because of the leukemia and there's no platinum. It's just, it's, it's terrible. And they were all not overweight. But we're talking obese here. That's why my weight won't ever. I mean, do you tell me that a 25 BMI is supposed to be good? Okay, well, I'll, mine's is 23 because that's it's just how concerned I am about having all the excess fat because I I witnessed it, I saw it, and these were people who were dear to my heart that literally broke my heart not knowing it but i'm more family than i am anything else and when you lose family we're not talking cousins here and that's tragic within itself but we're talking mama and sisters and brothers you this is real heavy stuff for a young man to have to try and deal with. <clears throat> mm. Mm. I, I can only imagine. Um, with your mom, I, I'm assuming you had not yet begun kind of really delving into your own health journey yet, correct? That, that, that's, that's correct. And um, every time I, I do a show, I'm always thinking, 
and my sister was on one of my on one of one of one of the shows that, that I was doing and we were talking about how good the food was tasting and looking and she mentioned you know mom would have would have eaten anything that you pair because she would have i mean i would be around her in the kitchen and again whatever she cooked we ate and i learned to cook by just being with her but i can't do a sh i can't do a food for life a show without thinking of her and wishing someone had um you know taught her because she would have listened just like i'm listening mm. I, I would think uh doing what it is that you do it, it would be almost impossible not to feel her every single time that you're you're teaching a class um mm -hmm. i know every time i crack the mic and i talk about health i i feel like i'm actually talking to the old version of me you know trying to coach that yes. that guy up letting them know that uh, it's going to be okay and and that there's a healthier way and that's that's a it's kind of like a subconscious motivation, you know, and, and yeah. a pretty strong one at that. And, Absolutely. And yeah. Absolutely. Um, and then when your sisters uh, got sick as well, you just mentioned that one was on your show. How many sisters do you have? Okay. So, <laughs> you know, this is, I, I, I had, I had three, three sisters and um, so the baby girl is still living. And uh, so I make sure that she's watching my show. <laughs> Not going, you know. But my my two older sisters, and particularly the one that was uh, 54, you know, she's like that. She was like that second mom, you know, because she was the oldest of all of us. And I was always on her hip, I was told, but I was, you know, she was just always there for me. So, and then when she, you know, get leukemia. Um, but again, I just look back at those habits that, that that they had, and it was destined to not end pretty at all. Um, and then you can't carry that kind of weight around and not wear a heart out or with the blood pressure that's going to affect the kidneys and all the other things that it's going to do. Ah, that's why I say medication is not my destination. <laughs> I saw too many, too many of my siblings, my close family own it. And I really don't want any part of it. But I tell folks, if you own it, please um, take it. Let's find another, but don't let it be a a pass so you can eat anything you want. You still need to be working on your your goals and to come off of it, but don't stop without your physicians or clinicians uh, advice, mm. you know. When your sisters uh, were ill, uh, I, I'm going to ask you this because this is something that comes up on the show almost all the time. Uh, even on the live shows, people will be asking this in chat rooms. And I was, I was talking to some people about this the other day as well. When your sisters got ill, uh, how did you try to talk to them about what it is that you were discovering there as far as the connection between diet and health? You don't want to be that pushy person. But at the same time, you have this really powerful, potentially life-saving information that you want to share with them. So how did you how did you handle that? Well, I didn't know as much as I know now, but the the vitamins, I would always try and encourage them to, you know, to try and to supplement because I was a, a believer in getting the right nutrition but we didn't always know how to get it so we, one thing was for sure if you took a multivitamin uh you would be getting more than you you're, you're getting because we didn't you know the greeneries wasn't there in their diet um i was telling people on my show the other night that if you give the body the nutrition that it needs you can handle the craving well my my people my sister they they, they didn't give the body anything that it needed and the craving just kind of took over because 
when, and you may remember this because this is kind of all over the world, but when the, their children were selling world finest chocolate, well, <laughs> they didn't have to go out and sell it because the household was eating it, right? And so it wasn't, it could be in the morning, it could be right before you go to bed. They just had really terrible habits. And what I just tried to do was, because I didn't really know how to share with them about, you know, like like I know now, but I did try and share with them, hey, we need to, because we need to get, we need to get the vitamins and the minerals in our bodies so that it can function well. And I always play sports stuff and I wanted them to be active, but nobody, nobody was. And, and the thing is, and this is the thing that kind of helps me along sometimes. When you don't know and you hadn't had anybody to show you. And then again, I am like what they call the knee baby. I was like the youngest, except for my sister. She was the baby. I was the knee baby. And they were older and they always felt that they knew more about what to do than I knew about what to do. But now they are clever. But now if I could have shown them, hey, taste this, hey, try this, it would have been a whole lot better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about Food for Life. It's about show and tell, man. Don't you yeah, can, man. You the, can, the, you know, <laughs> not just telling you, hey, taste this. My wife never have eaten tofu in her life. She now, hey, we need some uh, <laughs> scrambled tofu. <laughs> she never had quinoa in her life. I love that quinoa salad. Is this quinoa? No. So that gives my heart joy to see me take, you know, take her mindset to a whole nother level because we've said, to each other. I'm going to take care of me for you, and I need you to take care of you for me. And so introducing these new foods, it's, it's, I'm, a, I'm a child in a candy store when you think about what I've had to go through, and, I, and, and that's why I, I didn't wait to get started. Oh, no. As soon as I got out of the class, man, I was scheduling a show so that I can start reaching people and telling people Hey, I don't want you to be, and I don't say this just straight out, but I'm saying when I'm showing them how to do this, I don't want you to, you know, to, to die early like my mom. I don't want you to die early like my sisters. I don't want you to die early like my dad. I don't want you to die early like my brother. I, I want you to be able to deal even with this COVID stuff now because it's all about your immune system. Here's what you can do. And that's what I love. What I love about you, Charles, is that you've been through all of this and yet you still have this million dollar smile that can just light up a room yeah. and your enthusiasm is just unmatched, man. And and you're just you're out there and you're doing it and you're changing lives. The, the Food for Life instructor. And that's part of the reason why I wanted to have you on today, not just your incredible story, but to talk about some of the successes that you've had as a Food for Life instructor, because I think that there's a lot of people out there, Charles, who have similarly powerful stories, mm. you know, yes. who would make fantastic instructors. And I know that um, we are, in fact, accepting applications for the next class of Food for Life um, certification. So, like, can you talk to me about your experience thus far as an instructor and, and even some of the successes that you've seen from people who have come to your classes? Yes. Um, first of all, let me just say, when you get an email and... The email reads, uh, hey, you don't know me, but you may know my husband. He does this. He is obese. I am obese. We're both diabetics. We're on the insulin. And we're struggling with high blood pressure. And I noticed that you were cooking on these shows we need some help we need we just want our life back that right there brought me to tears i sent her a note said hey i got you here's what i want you to do 
uh, my show, you know, was already crowded. I sent her the link. Come on this show. I'm going to walk you through how you can get started on getting your life back. That's all people want. And so, Chuck, when you look at people who are obese, they didn't wake up one morning to, and say, I'm going to be overweight. I'm going to be obese. That's my goal. No, those were the diets that they picked up from grandparents and parents and other family members, and they carried it on, and they may act like they're okay, but deep down, they really want to do something about it. And when they see somebody that is not pushing things on them, just sharing with them, this is what you can do, this is how you can do it, they'll reach out to you and they'll love it. I've gotten so many emails, like people who are on my show, who've been a part of the, um, the cooking show that I do for Food for Life, are saying, and they're sending me pictures of, of the dish that they are preparing. I always tell them, <laughs> I, I, and, they're, and they're saying, uh, I didn't know that we could, we could saute onions without oil right that and i didn't know that actually and before food for life so we're taking out all of this oil and we're teaching them about how many uh calories are in each grains of fat and now they understand this is the reason that i hadn't lost weight hey i need to can you send me some more menus when is the next show do i have to register for the next one too this is the success that we've had so far on this uh, since being a food for life instructor this is so impactful to people who otherwise were just going to sit there and not say anything but they would be struggling on what to do and how to do it. and here we come with food for life now we're able to show them so i'm in the recruiting mode because i want mississippi to have several food for life instructors you know, throughout Mississippi, because we have work to do. And the idea of people who are changing their lives said, okay, I'm, I'm going to go vegan now for uh, 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 21 days. Okay. Well, well, well Mr. Charles, I am, I'm going to do, I'm going to do, I'm going to start off vegetarian. It's fine. Let's just start moving in the right direction. I'm good with that. I just want to show up every Tuesday at six o'clock and do a cooking demonstration. Let folks know whatever you put in your ingredient is your and your dish is your wish. But your health is your wealth and how you feel is for real. And if you don't feel like going out exercising, it's because you're putting the wrong thing in your body. So we have to gradually start making some of these changes. That's what I'm excited about. Just being able to have a group of people, 30, 40 people, been up to 60 people on a, on a, on a, on a, on a uh, Zoom, and, and they're listening, and they're sending me pictures of what they're cooking. Oh, that's a good feeling. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. A, a good feeling. I, I would imagine so. I mean, that, that's a packed house. So uh, if somebody wants to join one of your shows, your classes here, uh, you said it's every Tuesday at 6. Where can they go to register? I always have it on, uh, I'll have them on my um, Facebook page, not my Facebook page, but my website page, which is myhelpmymississippi.com, right? And you can also go to Eventbrite. I always advertise there, and then it will, you know, let you in when we get one posted there. Yes. So myhelpmymississippi.com is right. my website. We'll make it real easy. We're going to include a link right down in the uh, show description right now. So all you need to do if you're interested in joining Charles is go ahead and click on that. And uh, the last thing that I want to touch on with you is I think that for a lot of people who are kind of on the fence about this whole going plant-based thing, they're thinking, man, I'm going to have to give up all the foods that I used to love. 
but nothing could be further from the truth because in the six years now that I've been eating a, an exclusively plant-based diet, there has not been a single food that I have not been able to replicate that is equally as tasty, if not tastier than the original that I had been enjoying my entire life. And I think that that's something probably that is a lot of fun for the people who come to your shows as well. Absolutely. 100%. And I keep mentioning my wife because how she feels, she'll let you know. But her request for Mother's Day for me was, hey, can you make some of that Western trail? <laughs> you? <laughs> Absolutely. We'll make some of that, that Western trail stew. It is 100% plant based and she's eating oatmeal every day now. We're doing the grit. We're not giving up anything. Well, we're, we're giving you the same taste with the grits, for an example. Um, and we're giving you that the oatmeal which is absolutely fantastic with the apples and just a little bit of walnuts in it. And you, and you do a plant-based milk with it or you, but like we do the grits. We're not get, you're not giving up anything. So I would say this, don't think of it as what you're giving up. Think of it as how you're going to go up in your feelings up in your thoughts because we are affecting our minds when we feed it properly right so if you want uh and i tell i was telling them the other night because i did a, a a a western trail stew when we put the um liquid smoke in listen create the taste that you want there is nothing that we can't do here at food for life as a food for life instructor that won't create the taste that you're after. Let's take one at a time. And I took some, my wife wanted me, we had a children's ministry meeting at, at the church. She said, hey, again, here's somebody who have never even tried tofu. She said, Can, why don't you take some of that um, uh, tofu, uh, the scrambled tofu for breakfast and we feed the, the workers. And then you do some grits. I never, I never ever said, no, I can't do it because here, I'm talking about somebody else is my mouthpiece telling everybody that she talked to. Hey, y'all need to try this. Hey, you're all going to love this. Charles cooked this. Um, you can't even tell it's not eggs. And sure enough, folks are loving it. It got me invitations to go back and do different things at different churches, Chuck. So you're 100% right. We can create whatever you want your food to taste like. Let's go for forward and make it happen because that's what you can do. That's it. And, and let it be known, my fellow Southerners, you heard the man say grits many, many times in the past couple of minutes. You do not have to go without your grits. I assure you, I eat grits all the time. Charles is a master grit maker, apparently himself. <laughs> so you can get your grit on, you can get whatever it is that you want on, and it's going to be healthy and it's going to be fantastic. You don't have to go without. Uh, if you would like to follow in Charles's footsteps and change lives yourself, coach people up, help raise those health IQs, as I like to say here on the show, you can become a Food for Life instructor as well. Applications for the next round of classes are being accepted until June 1st. We've got a link to apply right now in the show description as well, or you can log on to fflclasses.org, fflclasses.org. Charles, man, we are out of time, but there is so much more that I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you uh, about this children's song that you got going on. Uh, I want to talk to you more about, about your shows, and I want to know uh, your grit tips. I want to do a show exclusively on grits. How about that? Absolutely. Absolutely, man. It's a Southern thing. You got to have some grits now. <laughs> there it is, man. There it is. You just warmed the old Southern Virginia heart of mine. All right, Charles Smith, thank you so very much for being here, my friend. Thank you, man. I appreciate you having me, Chuck. 
If your health IQ is a couple of points higher than it was a few minutes ago, go ahead and like this video or subscribe to the YouTube channel. And to take it even higher, head over to Apple Podcast or wherever you get your favorite shows. Look for the exam room by the Physicians Committee. Hit the subscribe button there as well and help to make your world a healthier place.